right, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Wilton Community School District, Wednesday, May 8th, 2019, 5.30 p.m. board meeting. The mission of the Wilton Community School District is to provide education that encourages continual progress through the improvement of one's abilities, expansion of one's interests and knowledge, and the growth of one's character. Call to order, please. Roll call, Joy. Linda Duncan. Here. Tony Bird. Gary Mala. Here. Bob Metzger. Here. Apparently. Thank you. Agenda approval. Are there any additions, changes, or corrections, Mr. Burnett? None. All right. All those in favor, please indicate the same. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Minutes to do the approval of April 10th fiscal year 2020 budget hearing first. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Secondly, the fiscal year budget amendment hearing. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Lastly, the April 10th, 2019 regular meeting. Well, the problem is, is if it's something big, TMI's emergency. Minutes from the regular right. Second. 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 report is Latchkey. So you have the usage at the top, which the overall usage is down a little bit from March to April. Um, but most of that, I believe, is in casual. And then April was a money maker month. So we're ordering a bunch of new stuff for the summer program. So you are seeing that in the May bills. Questions or comments on Latchkey? Current agenda report for Latchkey is next, so everything but payroll, how many was spent in the month of April. Nutrition fund report is next. First page is the school year lunch program and breakfast program usage by month and school year to date. And finances on the second page. And Carrie still has her list of things. But I think a few things have been ordered, but we need to get the rest of them going so that we can get this balance down some before the end of the year. Um, any questions or comments? Carrie, did the report for nutrition 
fund is next, and that's um, how money was spent in the month of April for the nutrition fund, excluding payroll. Next report is activity fund on the first page. report, the period of the report for all of those funds, which spans across four pages. Money was spent in the month of April in the agency fund and the city uh, fund and the FFA enterprise. Any questions? Curricular driving is next. Got track and golf at the top, with the classroom activities in the middle, and then special Olympics busing, which they pay for the driver and the mileage, and all the payroll expenses that go with that. Next is the extra payroll. Um, it spans two pages in a month. We have our annual BLT, building leadership team payments for elementary and junior senior high. Um, and then the track ticket takers um, and some elementary choir supervision. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much status quo. Any questions or comments on any of the extra payroll? Board bills are next. Ten pages. With the first several being general fund. And then we have one small invoice from White Pigeon um, to add the observatory. Cover that in insurance for the uh, April, May, June. And then we have a one cent sales tax in the funds 33 and 34. And then the Invoice for the uh, Pepple Fund and then our um, Bank is Trust GO bonds are payable the 1st of June. Um, and then the fee for hours for taking care of the resolutions that you guys did um, in the previous board meeting for the GO bond surplus for the next fiscal year. Questions on any of the bills? Um, that's our annual um, on-site wellness screening where Genesis comes out and that's our wellness incentive to get people to do that and this is the largest amount we've ever had. I believe before it was a large number of 81 and we have like 96 employees take advantage of it where they can get their PSA tested, um, anyone can have their thyroid tested, they do the complete blood work and the medical screenings and your blood pressure and We've actually had a handful of employees by doing that screening find out they had issues that they're unaware of. So and we they get a private printout back from Genesis and are encouraged to share that with their um, provider. So so that's our incentive. And then actually, Iowa Star School has an incentive that if you go online and share those numbers on the Walmart um, input screen, then you can get a twenty-five dollar gift card from them. So actually, they can earn seventy-five dollars by doing the wellness screen, and we pay for that out of our self-insurance fund. So, 
other questions? So, and the uh, one cent sales tax, the observatory expenses that you see out of 1033, that's coming out of our one cent sales tax money. The observatory expenses that you see in 1034, that's coming out of the donations. So that's, a, that's the difference there. All the donated money went into 34 for the building project, and then the things that we're doing for the, what we're calling the observatory STEM room out in the old ICM room, mm -hmm. that's coming from 1033. There's been some big changes made in that room. And then this is the final payment out of Fund 34 to Custom Builders. So that will be the final payment for the actual building, but we're still finishing the inside. I list a lot of dates and action and upcoming events in my report. If you have any questions on those, let me know. The middle part of my report talks about our professional development days because we have some extra ones because of the way the snow makeup days were. So we have them delightfully so filled. Um, and I, I think it's, we don't usually have this opportunity at the end of the year to touch base with our teachers and do some wrap up and some forward looking forward, I guess, into the next year. So I've listed there, um, pre-K, they're gonna be working with some goal assessments. Leader and me, we're gonna spend a chunk of a day kind of rearranging our action teams. We're gonna add an academic action team to help us with goal setting next year with the kids and the adults and kind of clean that up a little bit. Um, hopefully, we're gonna have some time to go out and look at the observatory and kind of see some of the things that could be potential for our classroom teachers next year, potentially brought into the curriculums. Book study, uh, what we say and how we say matters. Uh, Mike Anderson actually um, is the author, and Paul Sheets went to this session out of ASCD in Chicago, and it's all about teacher talk, and over time, if teachers can switch their language from first person to second person, it makes things more intrinsic and rewarding for students, and they aren't just trying to be teacher pleasers or rule followers, which when the teacher isn't there or the rule isn't there, then not as applicable to them. So it's really good. I mean, like, instead of saying, um, I like the way you're working on your math today, you can say, working on your math that hard is going to make you a better math student, and just putting it more on the kids. It's hard. I mean, after I read the book, I catch myself all the time. But I think if all the teachers having this training and our associates, because they're working extra days, are also going to be in on that. So I think that's really exciting. Uh, reading new reading curriculum, so we'll be training one day. Someone from Pontus and Pinnell is coming out to do that training. We're going to have a chance to do vertical articulation K-12, so all the math teachers are going to get together. Um, and we don't have time for that very often. And then this summer, we have a lot of teachers that are taking advantage of our TQ funds to do one of two book studies that teach like Finland, which is a Timothy Walker book all about bringing joy back into the classrooms and a Doug Fisher book, All Learning is Social and Emotional. So of course, that's a big push tying that in now. So that's kind of exciting learning that I'm looking forward to. Other than that, the last thing in my report is about our volunteers. And we really do uh, have a wealth of very kind, caring, and knowledgeable volunteers. That, between the kids who mentor our building and the adults, that really helps us on a daily basis get things done. Any questions? And then all those volunteers are listed there. But the kids aren't going to be votes. And we recognize them at the end of the year as well. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Austin. We will move to Mr. Snavely. Yeah, the junior senior high board report. Um, 
the NHS the National Irish Society luncheon was um, hosted by the Chamber of Commerce on, oh, on Wednesday, April 24th. And uh, just thanks to the Chamber for that. That's a, it's a really good deal to get community members and uh, our students, in this case seniors, together to you know, just share their future plans and just have that, that conversation and enjoy lunch together. And so we appreciate that. Um, thanks to Mr. Bean for all the work he does with uh, NHS there. So I highlighted that. And then the second thing I'd like to highlight is we had the ICANN financial aid meeting last Tuesday. It was April 30th. We only had four people show up for that. We had two parents and two students. So um, I talked to Mr. Patterson. Next year, I think we're going to have people RSVP and decide. Cause we're bringing the rep out of Iowa City in this case, and it's really not worth their time to do that. I think of what I think what's happening is they've streamlined that process so much that it's become a lot easier. I know the first year I was principal, we had like 40 people in the room, and but FASPA is you know a lot easier I think and. And with our new career counselor, I think that's going to be a, a heavy hitting topic for her. So if you hear anything about that, let me know. But our, the last couple of years, we just had a lousy turnout as far as parents coming. And I, I don't think it's because they, they just don't want to come. I just think it's because they know what they need to do. And if they don't, they call the school or, or whatever. So we need to make some changes to kind of just make that a little bit more efficient. The last thing I want to highlight is we had our first district lockdown drill on Wednesday, May 1st, so last week, and uh, it went well. Uh, it went as well as we thought or planned it, it to go, I guess. Um, we did notify parents afterwards, so we didn't have any rumors floating out there about anything. It was solely a drill. Um, we need to continue to expand on this. You know, we've worked a lot on our plan. We've uh, done a lot of communication. We've practiced drills. I know at the secondary, we need to get into more of barricading, and then ultimately, we need to get into learning how to evacuate and practice and that, thing, that, you know, that type of thing. So that's what we'll um, practice, I guess, next year. And we'll have a, we're going to probably have that safety committee right away in the fall um, to get everybody back together and kind of review our plan and talk about those things. So uh, as far as the safety of the school and our plan and carrying out those drills, uh, we're in really good shape. I mean, we, we're not, we always, it's always going to be a work in progress, but we're sitting pretty good with that. And we just need to keep fine-tuning things and practicing. So, um, any questions about the junior, senior high report before I go to the athletic side? All right. Well, track and golf is in full swing, and actually this week, you know, we have conference, track, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night at Tips, we have district qualifying, uh, then next week we get into the postseason golf on Monday night. We host sectional golf at Wakanza. And then, um, you know, all of a sudden spring sports come to a close. So um, we did have three track meets. We successfully had all three of them. Uh, one of them did get rained out and the wind kind of took over and things like that. But um, so really we had two and a half track meets. The good news is we did get the electronic timing system up and running. There's a, we want to get the, a new cord where we can run it out of the press box, but we ran, we ran it at the finish line. It was very efficient. Um, those people that worked were amazed at how easy it was, and uh, so we're moving forward with that. So we were very happy that we were able to get that up and going. So that was good. And then it's not in my board report, but last Saturday, our junior high um, girls went to state track meet, and um, I told Coach Brown it was all because of him, but um, he, he laughed. But we did have three school records set by our junior high girls. So uh, if you want to look outside the central office, there are pictures up there and uh, the relay times and things like that. So the future looks bright uh, with junior high track, and I just I thought that was kind of a neat thing to share as my last item with the athletic report. So any questions about that? Thank you. All right, we will move on to action items. We have number one. Very good. This is the time of year where people are um, moving and shaking in terms of uh, different positions and, and whatnot, getting ready for next year. You can see the list of resignations uh, from our associate, uh, Cynthia Cook, and some uh, coaching positions there. Nothing under transfers or job descriptions or terminations or reductions. I do have four people that have uh, resigned. 
So that's the matter of the Bible? What did I say? Four? Five. Five. Excuse me. Yeah. Five. Was it Ruth? Seven. 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 I haven't gone through these, as you can see, a lot of it's from uh, Manual Lotus, testing programming, student records regulations, student director information, etc. That's straight from the state. Student photographs, we follow everything that's in our policy. Someone was removed from the photograph list. It is interesting in today's uh, social media world, though, you know, when we Post things on social media. Yeah. We got to be really careful on that. Mm -hmm. So, I have no suggestions or any tweaks under the policies this month. But I'm certainly open to. Or would like any of them reviewed further. Seniors for class of 19. And how many? 52. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Letter B is our Iowa Wesleyan Student Teaching Agreement. You'll see a few of them coming across the spring. You and I usually does as well. Um, just allows them the opportunity to have student teachers enrolled. Letter C is the driver's ed agreement with the AA for 2019-2020, still set at $370. I think I saw that they haven't raised that since 2011-ish. So that rate's been pretty constant. This is Hewitt teaches that class still here on site. So it works. And then letter D is the 1920 memorandum of understanding for the operational sharing agreement for the career and uh, college counselor, Mr. Snavely, was discussing in Linda. If it's approved, please <coughs> sign that tonight so we can get yeah. that MOU put in place. Okay. So that's it under consent agenda number three. Between TMI and Northwest this year, the Johnson Control even put a bid in, or we just didn't want to? Might have tried three or four other companies and nobody else gave any bids. So just know we tried to you know, get a bigger pool, but that's who <coughs> turned it in. Uh, TMI has a prorated schedule. I'll pull it up here for the first years, I think around 32,000 or 31,000 maybe, and the second years, I don't want to slaughter. 32, 32 first year. Basically, it ends up being about an average of 32, and Northwest just does a flat rate of 37.9 in three years. So, our recommendation is to go with TMI. Um, look at a good amount for a three year plan. Is that correct, Joe? Do you have anything to add? Uh, I. Other than TMI, I mean, is there anything that. No, no, that we were. I had talked to Justin and them on control side, the only difference you're going to have there is TMI has to use an outside source to do the control stuff, which will probably be Northwest. It, won't so be Northwest. it may take us a little bit more time to get something done, but other than that, bids are bids, are bids to the same amount of work and everything that we need done. So, If the average is around 33,000, I said 33,000. 
I still bought a six thousand dollar, no, no, five thousand dollar, four thousand dollar savings a year. So over three years is twelve grand. I think it's worth it. And I'm good with either company. I, I'm good with TMI. I'm good with Northwest. Both have done a good job. So, so. it's my recommendation to go with the bid from TMI for three years, as stated. And we did look at um, adding this to our the portion that we could to our equipment breakdown insurance, and then adding the coverage we needed, but it was it didn't end up being cost effective, and it would have been a lot more work for the central office and for Joe and Bo, so we didn't, didn't go that route. And we figured out it wasn't cost effective. So is there a fee when you have to go to Northwest? No. The I mean, no, know, there's no fee. There's nothing fee different. So what we're trying to explain is so. The, TMI isn't, they can work on the computer side of it, but they aren't certified for the software. So they don't have something, they don't have access to software or updates that Northwest does. So what happens is if they can't figure it out and they can't fix it, they have to contact Northwest to come out as a subcontractor to fix the problem. The problem in that is, is our emergency through TMI is not Northwest emergency because we're not a direct customer. So that's where, that's where Joe exactly states where we may have to wait two days to a week before, depending on what Northwest schedule is, before they make it out to us. It doesn't cost us money. No, it doesn't time. cost us money. It's just a matter of we have to wait for... A contractor for a subcontractor. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. The potential's there. Yeah. They might be able to fix it. If they don't, they have a subcontractor now. It's kind of like a Chevy dealership needing to use a Ford employee. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, for, for $12,000, we try it. If we don't like it, we don't ever do it again. I mean, that's, or we split the bids. And we've had PMI before, but did we not have the software back then? We didn't. We, have we did every, everything that we do forward is always automated. The old days of valves and, and things like that That's are what I'm done. Saying, is when we had TMI before, yeah. we didn't have the software we didn't have, that we have now. Right? It kind of worked exactly. out the same way when we put the old 4 edition on. Yeah. The stuff from Train, they couldn't do. Train wouldn't let anybody do it, so you yeah. had to call Train to come and do it. Yeah. But Train is some a whole different ballgame. And we, what do we have now? We have Northwestern. Right we now. have Northwestern now. They yeah. were Northwest. low. They were low three years ago. And now yeah. they're okay. got TMI obviously. So now I don't see there being a concern on it. Because in the long run, obviously we're getting the the what we need from Northwest, even though we're going for TMI, but it's going to take a little bit. Is that ever an issue? Really, really, that it's going to take. It's going to be more of a complaint if one of the large HVAC units on the roof go down and we can't figure out why. If it takes them a week, then the building's hot. Or actually, it'd be like half the building would right. be hot for, right. uh, you, you know how that's laid out. But like so. you said, we'll try it. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, worst, worst, worst case scenario, we're saving $12,000. We've, we've talked to Northwest. Northwest is aware TMI uses them all the time okay. for other okay. contractors. Okay. All we want to know is it, it went, everybody be aware of when somebody comes to you and possibly if we have some issues later down the road, that's what I think those issues would be. Mm -hmm. And because this is the first time we've had these, the soft The big controls. I, we, right. Like in the 94 edition, yeah. we do have train, but they were extremely old right. controls, so they were closed proprietary train controls. Okay. Now we have open controls. To where we still have train units on the roof, but we can have different companies control those units. Okay. So. And uh, this is for three years. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this would only potentially affect the AC or also the heat. Well, it can affect it can anything. This computer, because everything now the, is so much computer the, control. The new boilers are ran off the control system. They have a control system. Uh, the, any of the HVAC stuff is all controlled. I'm just wondering, is there a situation where you'd have Basically, the entire building impacted in a way that's going to affect education for multiple days because we're waiting for Northwest to come. And 
things tend to break when the weather is the worst, and so they're yeah. anyways. Uh, well, we don't know. We don't, we, don't, we, we don't know, and I I couldn't I could list a bunch of scenarios that that may happen, right. but I don't know if it would happen. Yeah, and if like in the winter, controls went down, the boilers, and I'm, I'm sure they would be on them. Right. Is that because you can't have cold buildings? So yeah. right. I don't see it being a big of a problem. If it's not as big a problem, they can kind of put it off. I can see them maybe saying, "Well, this isn't that big a deal. Your building isn't cold, so okay. we're not going to run there right away." We might, but we don't know it until we actually do it. We won't know. And we've done three years before. We always do three years. Yeah, we always do three years. That's what we always do is three years, and every third three years we get a rebid. So. Okay. What's interesting to me, you know, and I wear two hats and everyone will do the same process next door. It's interesting how different companies, just TMI and Northwest, for example, will underbid one another to get into a school district. And then if they get their handiwork there, and then the next time it comes around to bid it out and we're in the situation, all of a sudden, hey, they're now more expensive, but now the control piece is not a conspiracy theorist, but you can see why they might underbid to get in the district to get their mm -hmm. fingerprints on things, so then they always have their fingerprints in the district. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to renew, it's like, well, if you want the best service, our controls are there. Mm -hmm. and it's, especially with HVAC, it's very hard because there's not a whole lot of companies to do it. And there's not, especially on the control side, there's not a lot of certified people to do it. That's kind of one of those trades when everybody talks about pushing college, we should push trades as well because there are people out there that's a large money maker. Right. I mean, we spend a lot of money and we look for three years what we're going to spend. And some of those people are straight out of high school. They've never gone to trade, they've never been traded. So, um. Any other questions on what, right? Yeah, I'm just curious about the individual action items. Yep. A. I move to approve it. Second. Yeah, B and C are both for our multi-purpose building. Uh, B is the concrete bids there, Twin Hookstrom uh, and All American Concrete. Joe, do you have anything you want to add? The Hoekstra masonry bid is for 13.6. That includes the footing of the doors. Yeah, I was going to say that the, what they're bidding is the smaller section, the 30 foot by 60 foot section where the bathrooms and so on are going to be. It's for that, and it's also for a curb that's on the north side of the building that will run from the edge all the way across to the road and then all the way down to the south so the water will flow down and that's putting footings four foot down on both of the garage doors so that we don't have any problem there. So that's what is it intense. Yep. That's four inches of concrete inside with four inches of rock and rebar in both of them too. So. Yep. Gary and I were business for the board meeting but where the turf will be will be just crushed rock just like our playground is. The whole building doesn't need to be so our recommendation is to go with the hopes for masonry at 13.6. I'll make a motion to approve the bid hopes for masonry. Second. All those in favor, please indicate the same aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Then this must be the last table. Yep. You can see the two bids there providing uh, labor material equipment and services and solid new service to the building. Uh, Tri City Electric and Ace Electric bid on it. Tri City came in at 11,852 and Ace at 13,021. Yeah. Is that Second. 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 We started this several years ago when we worked and see what the breakdown was and what we basically spend our money on. Stacy uh, sits down with both of them and said, hey, here's your budget. And, and they determine our needs and the teacher's needs. And this is where we're at. 
Justin, is there anything you want to? I the only thing that I got um, that I want the board to be aware of is I send out Chromebook bids, um, and um, I put a, I, I put a deadline of April thirtieth was my so that way I could come to the board on the May board meeting. Um, we had a vendor that that submitted another bid at May third because there was a promo from HP that was supposed to end in April, but they continued it through July, which makes his bid about $1,000 cheaper, but it was after the deadline. So I wanna make sure that you, the board is aware of that because it's a benefit to the school. We save $1,000. Mm -hmm. And I set the deadline for the bid. There's, there was nothing beyond that point, but um, my, rec my original recommendation was for RTI uh, at $47,082.80, but the submitted bid I got on May 3rd, if I can find it, was for $46,165. So I am recommending that we go with the resubmitted bid on May 3rd a thousand dollar, basically a thousand dollars less, and that would be through IT Savvy versus RTI. This is for the hardware. The Chrome, it's Chromebook. Are you guys, you guys are on my budget, or are you guys on the Chromebooks? Oh, sorry. I'm on the budget. My budget's pretty boring. Okay. It's just a right. general. Okay. But you have that bed in your budget, right? No, that's one cent sales tax. Oh. So oh, okay. uh, we have something in here for 33 out 32. Yeah, that's no. what I wondered about that too. Oh, that yes, uh, that that was my that was my bid for. Um, we're replaced. Sorry, we are replacing IBM lab. The IBM lab that's downstairs, and we have some. I had some computers to bid out as well for the STEM room, the new computers out there, and uh, we have a few in the classroom. So we have three actual motions that need to be made. One for the budget, Correct. two for the STEM classroom, and three for the Chromebooks. Yes. So we need a motion to approve the budget. Well, the STEM is thirty three thousand. Right? No, the 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 yeah the STEM room and the the lab are thirty three thousand. Yes. Okay. So we're doing the budget first. Yep. Okay. So with this late bid though, is that that's separate? Well, it's in the budget. Does this pose a problem though that we are accepting a bid that came in after? After the fact, and that's why. I and well, then the other vendors get a chance to rebid. Yeah. I guess would be the so the procedurally, I'd hate to get us in the nine over $1,000. So, I mean, a lot of money. I think the same way. thing. I also just think the integrity, what if they have access to a, a rebate? Well, and that, and that's, that's fine. I, I, since I was going to be here, so what I would recommend then is to uh, just rebid it back out and then in June. Well, we have to approve it. Yeah. So that works. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Yep. I mean, the other two have a chance. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I just think that's the integrity. Well, it's past the deadline. Right, it's a matter of process. Yep. The deadline's already passed, so I think we should be up on this. I think so. I think it's just the benefit. But the question was just, yeah, yeah. that doesn't affect your overall budget. No, my, my, my person, the technology budget does not, that doesn't affect that. So your budget is the ISP tech budget that you're showing me, Correct. and the yep. um, RTI bid was for the one cent sales tax Chromebook rotation. Correct. Yes. But it's not really labeled like that. So we're not tied together. The forty-seven versus forty-six will not affect the budget. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we're doing the budget first. So is there anything on the budget, Justin? That it's pretty standard. Okay. It's it's kind of like I said. The, the my biggest part was I had to bid out machines okay. for okay. for that the lab and that. All right. So we can approve the budget first. Move we'll approve the technology budget. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Now we want to go to the. Are you looking at the... I've got HP computers at, well, no, that's down the way. The first thing was, the second one we have is this Abby thing. 
Justin, what the board has in front of them is they've got the lab type, laptop bid price yes. per unit. Yeah, Five yeah, I, that that is my that's my that's the bid price on the technology budget. So technically, if you we already approved, we already approved the technology budget. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Actually, though, I think you should still approve, and this is in the budget, but this is a bid that you need to approve. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah because it was a large sum of money. It was thirty-three thousand dollars. Yeah, the lab oh, and it. some of the computers. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah, it's broken down basically yeah. more for me than it is anything else okay. when I looked at per unit price. So IT Savvy came in, uh, the laptop, we're putting laptops in the lab. Uh, yeah. We talked to the, the teacher and trying to make more room for that, uh, it made more sense to do <coughs> laptops. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the desktops are going to go into the STEM lab, and I have a list. I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me, but there's a, there's a few other places that they're going to go. So yeah, for replacements. I'm going to approve the laptop bid from IT Savvy for thirty-three thousand over thirty-two. Second. Oh, is it clear? Can we take by saying aye? Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. So are we good with the bids? Is there anything else that needs to be approved on the technology? Not, not that I'm aware of. No, I'll re, I'll resubmit the the Chromebook bids. But at least Stacy going forward has a number to work with, so that That's way she can budget it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what we take a look at. All right, on the informational items, you can see our three hires for, for uh, this month in terms of uh, coaching changes. Maintenance-wise, getting things cranked up for summer already. Uh -huh. Four weeks from Thursday, we're out. So, uh, once the weather starts to turn, then it'll feel like it. But gosh, the graduation will be a week from Sunday. And it's just, it's hard to Crazy read. Nice. We're over May 8th, but it feels like it should be about April 8th with the weather. Uh, yeah. So, anything full board wise? We changed our meeting dates day to the second Tuesday. Of course, usually it's always before, but yep. since it's on, we're doing it next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Next Tuesday will be. All right. So sometimes, but most of the time, will be. Most before. yes, but there's a couple months that yeah. So anyway, so yeah, we're doing that. So, yeah. No. Uh, that being said, it's been an awful good school year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I won't, it won't affect, doesn't affect us, but I hope the weather does stay nice because if it does get in the 90s, we don't have a lot of time to live for early releases, but that doesn't mm -hmm. affect well because it does as much as your neighbor. So, that being said, that's all I have tonight. Yeah, the work session is Wednesday, May 22nd at 5, and then we'll meet again in June at 5.30 p.m.